sitting at a desk all day, maybe sitting on the couch watching TV for hours, surfing the net, or even watching this YouTube video is classified as sedentary behavior. And we do a lot of it. People do about eight to 10 hours a day. Sedentary behavior is bad. It causes a bunch of medical problems like cardiovascular disease. It can cause increased risk of mortality, which means death. It can increase risk of obesity. It can also cause chronic inflammation and a bunch of other problems. There was a study done that looked at 240,000 people. And what they found were the people who sat the most, most sedentary behavior, more than seven hours a day, they had about a 60% increased risk of dying for any reason about an 85% increased risk of dying from a cardiovascular disease, and about a 20% increased risk of dying from cancer. If you follow my channel, if you've seen any of my other videos, you probably know what I'm gonna say already. Exercise or being physically active is gonna help reduce those detrimental effects from sedentary behavior. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, is there anything else that we can do? And the answer is yes. Stick around as we explore our options. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here in New York City. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. The key is replacing sedentary behavior with active behavior. Now, it can be exercise, but it doesn't have to be. Enter light activity. Now, that can be doing the laundry, sweeping the floor, cleaning the dishes, these are all very light physical activity. Your heart rate's not gonna get up, but taking these activities and putting that instead of sedentary behavior actually has been shown to reduce some of the negative health effects of just sitting around all day. Over the next few minutes in this video, I'm gonna go over a bunch of actionable and scientifically based information that will help provide you resources on how to change this sedentary behavior. I'm going to leave a link below to a free PDF with the action points. Let's jump into the science and we're going to go over four critical areas impacted by sedentary time. So the first one we're going to cover is mortality, which means death. There are several studies with thousands of patients where they have them wear something similar to a smartwatch, which tracks their activity level and they follow these people over years. And these are typically people between the ages of 50 and 80. These studies have found that replacing 30 minutes of sedentary time with one of these light activities like walking around or just doing the dishes will actually reduce the risk of mortality, which is death, by almost 20% compared to people who just remain sedentary the entire time. And these benefits are obtained by people who are less than 65 and older people who are over 65 all can reap these same benefits. Now, if we crank up the diet and instead of replacing the sedentary behavior with just walking around, but we go to moderate to vigorous physical activity, we can now reduce the risk of death by a whopping 50% compared to those people who just remained sedentary. So we just finished talking about the risk of mortality with sedentary behavior. So the question is, is, are there any other health benefits? Yeah, we're off to number two, and we're gonna talk about metabolic syndrome or metabolic disease. Metabolic syndrome is essentially when a group of health parameters is outside the normal range. And there are five parameters, and if a three out of five are abnormal, this is a problem. And here they are. So one is waist circumference, so if someone's waist is too large, that's a problem. Another one is if their blood pressure is too high. Another one is if the glucose levels are out of control. Another one is if triglycerides are abnormal. And then uh, the last one is if their HDL, which is the good cholesterol, is abnormal. So if three out of these five is problematic, this is metabolic syndrome. Now, if someone has three out of five of these, this metabolic syndrome, they're at an increased risk for getting cardiovascular disease, early mortality, and very often metabolic syndrome is associated with sedentary behavior. So there have been several studies that are looking at replacing sedentary behavior with either just standing up or doing a little walking around, taking a few steps. And what they found was is that replacing 30 minutes of sedentary time with stay, walking around, okay, that is going to decrease the risk of metabolic syndrome by 28%. 
and reduce the risk of developing diabetes by 21%. Those are great numbers. Now, if let's say someone just stands up, you know, so 30 minutes of just standing instead of sitting, so what that has been shown is to reduce the risk of metabolic syndrome by 7% and reduce the risk of developing diabetes by 6%. So standing is good, but not nearly as good as stepping. So just turning the intensity ever so slightly up can make a tremendous difference as you see. Now, both stepping and standing can improve waist circumference, total cholesterol, triglycerides, and insulin level. Now, Upping it up to stepping around also will improve BMI as well as uh, glucose levels. So again, we're gonna see that cranking intensity is gonna have a big effect on waist circumference. So if someone substitutes 30 minutes of sedentary time with standing, it's gonna help reduce waist circumference. If they substitute with stepping, which is more active, they're gonna see a 3X improvement in waist circumference. And if someone is doing 30 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity as their substitute, they're gonna see even greater improvement in waist circumference. So again, we see this intensity issue with insulin and triglycerides. Substituting 30 minutes of sedentary behavior with light activity is going to give about a two, two and a half percent improvement in those parameters. But if we substitute the 30 minutes with real exercise, then we're gonna see a five to six times greater improvement in the insulin and triglyceride levels. Now we're up to number three. So we're now we're gonna talk about cardiorespiratory fitness. What is cardiorespiratory fitness? So essentially it's how the heart, lungs, and blood vessels, how well they work to get oxygen and nutrients to our muscles when we're being active. Cardiorespiratory fitness has been shown to be a critical determinant of our health. It's critical in terms of our risk of cardiovascular disease, metabolic syndrome, mortality, and several other components. Cardiorespiratory fitness is measured in units called METs. Now each one MET increase in cardiorespiratory fitness will translate into about a 13 to 15% reduced risk of mortality or cardiovascular event. Cardiovascular event would be like a heart attack or death from cardiovascular disease. Now, one of the key modifiable components to improving cardiorespiratory fitness is our physical activity. Now, conversely, increased sedentary behavior reduces cardiorespiratory fitness. So substituting out sedentary behavior with light activity will help prevent a loss of cardiorespiratory fitness. So if we go up a level and we substitute sedentary behavior with real exercise, we can see a 15 to 20% improvement in cardiorespiratory fitness. We're up to the next topic. This is number four, and this is physical function. And this is critical for older people. So as people age, they need to maintain their physical function to do their activities of daily living, like walking to the store and shopping, or walking upstairs, or doing house chores, or cooking or cleaning. All these abilities are critical in order to be able to maintain independent living as people age. So increasing sedentary time is going to reduce physical function. Conversely, if we substitute 30 to 60 minutes of the sedentary time with light activity or real exercise, we're going to see significant improvements in several categories of physical functioning such as walking speed, ability to get up from a chair, or maintain standing balance. And these are all real critical things that will affect elderly people in order to be able to live independently. So of course, substituting with real exercise is gonna have an exponentially greater improvement than just doing some light walking. But for many people, that's not an option. They can't do it for whatever reason. So I encourage those people, yeah, just get up, do a little walking around. Any breaking up of the sedentary behavior is going to be beneficial for your physical function. So let's wrap up this video and go over a few key points. So substituting sedentary behavior with either light activity or real exercise is going to help reduce the risk of early death and it's also gonna help reduce the risk of metabolic syndrome. And it's gonna help increase cardiorespiratory fitness and it's going to help improve physical function. The more time we substitute 
And the higher the intensity, the greater the gains. So I think a great path for people who are completely sedentary, take it slow. Substitute out some of your sitting time with just simple things like walking around. Once you start doing that, you're going to feel better. You're going to associate yourself not as a stationary sedentary person, but a more active person. And I think that's going to encourage people to become even more physically active and continue to reap even greater benefits. If you found value in this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. You may want to also check out my playlist on Phys Ed, where we review the science of exercise and how it improves our health. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in my next video or maybe in my office.